Many of the articles about the Continental Commons use Mr. Bill Sandy, a registered professional archaeologist and a Friends of the Fiscal Supply Depot trustee, as well as its members, as the source of various claims about the site. Hundreds of Continental Army soldiers are buried there. It's the largest Revolutionary War soldier cemetery in the country. The ruins on the property are barracks from the Revolutionary times. However, the State Historic Preservation Office has stated that it is unknown how many graves are on the site or who is buried in the burial ground, whether they are soldiers or civilians, and the human remains found have not been dated back to the Revolutionary War or the Continental Army. The first two claims were addressed in depth in part one of this video series, Excavating the Facts, so we will be addressing the third claim here. As an example of Mr. Sandy's changing conclusions from when he first worked for the landowner to when he joined the Friends of the Fishkill Supply Depot. The ruins found on the property have been called many things throughout the years. They were marked as brick factory and barn ruins on the 1973 Temple University study. Here is Mr. Sandy referring to them as such as part of a 2007 archaeological study on the property when he was working for the landowner. And so this is the this is one of the maps that Doug's talking about. Brick factory ruin lining up with this and then barn ruins over there. On the same dig, he refers to them as 19th century ruins to members of the Fishkill Historical Society and the State Historic Preservation Office, and remarks that they probably have more documentation on the ruins than him. 19th century feature probably associated uh, with this building over here, or with what we're calling Structure 2. Um, you guys may know more about these two, build two ruins than we do, uh, okay. in the sense that, um, you know, we don't have a lot of documentation. Really? Oh. He then joins the friends and calls them barracks, even dating them to 1779. This barracks was the 1779 barracks. Since joining the friends, Mr. Sandy has determined the ruins are a 1779 barracks. Where did he draw this conclusion, considering when he previously worked for the landowner in 2000, that study stated the barracks were located west of Route 9, meaning off of the property. This joins his other claims about the property, which have flipped from when he was working for the landowner to when he joined the Friends of the Fishkill Supply Depot. Uh, we didn't get a lot of artifacts. We got some nails. We got some 18th century buttons. And Additionally, note his claims that buttons were found in the foundation to date the ruins. This is a lie, considering they do not appear in his 2009 report, which lists only bone and nails as being recovered from Feature 1. Since joining the Friends in 2009, Mr. Sandy began to deliberately misinterpret previous studies to draw his own conclusions that hundreds of Continental Army soldiers are buried on the property he refers to as the largest revolutionary soldier cemetery in the country. These specious conclusions are what he uses when talking to the public, the press, and even state officials. Here Mr. Sandy describes his history with the site. How long have you been involved in this? Well, I was uh, hired uh, by a contract archaeology company to do the uh, study in 2007. Note he mentions the 2007 study as his first time working on the site, when in fact he actually worked as a field supervisor on a 2000 greenhouse consultant study, which, finding no evidence of Revolutionary War activity, resulted in the approval for a hotel to be built on the site under the seeker process. The 2007 greenhouse study found no evidence of human remains or burials north of Rachie's Run, and found evidence of eight graves south of the run. They explored one of those graves and found no evidence to date the remains to the Revolutionary period or the Continental Army. Other than those eight graves, nothing of significance was found on the site. In 2008, a ground-penetrating radar study was carried out by Milner and Associates to determine the limits of the burial area. Continuing to talk about the 2007 greenhouse dig, Mr. Sandy has this to say. Uh, our report didn't get done until 2009 because the client didn't want to pay for it because we found a lot of stuff. In actuality, the 2007 greenhouse study was paid for in full before the work had even begun. In fact, before the dig had even started, Bill Sandy and his team asked for 75% less sampling or archaeological processing of the soil that was being excavated. The unofficial 2007 report was submitted without the landowner's knowledge in 2009 and made official despite not being an active project in front of the town for over two years with glaringly missing facts and omitted documentation from prior archaeological studies done on the property, leading to questionable conclusions. The report now found that the ruins, previously not mentioned as being part of the Fishco Supply Depot, are now definitely part of the depot. At the time of the dig in 2007, Mr. Sandy didn't know what the ruins were. In 2009, he's sure they are barracks from the Revolution. The summary then states that the historic maps show virtually no activities on the site since the time of the Revolution, not mentioning an 1858 map, coincidentally missing from the 2009 report that showed the first time since the Revolution a structure was mapped on the property. There were as well two houses located on the property as late as the 1960s that were also missing from the report. 
Further, the summary of that report now recommended that more archaeological studies should be done, despite asking for less study before, due to site conditions and literature review. Does Bill have an axe to grind with the landowner for not being paid, or should it be with his former employer? When Mr. Sandy or the Friends are the source of information on the Continental Commons, the verbiage is definite and declarative, and use almost the exact same language that appears in Friends literature. Theories become conclusions, speculation becomes fact. As another example, take the Moyer Report, a 2014 cultural resource survey prepared for the town of Fishkill. The report repeated the claims that hundreds of Revolutionary War soldiers were found in the largest cemetery of the kind in the country. After Mr. Moyer was contacted and shown the claims in his report were not accurate, he recanted his statements and refiled the report. Where did these claims come from? According to his recantment letter, the information came from Bill Sandy, showing Mr. Sandy influencing an archaeological report that he was not even involved in. The pattern of Mr. Sandy's claims being walked back after being taken as fact repeated in the New York Times best-selling book, Lives in Ruins. The passages extensively quoting Mr. Sandy in the first edition were altered to be more accurate and less sensationalistic in the second. In the new edited version of the book, an entire postscript was added, including the State Historic Preservation Office's official statements on the site, those statements being that it is unclear how many people are buried there, if they are from the Revolution, or even if they are soldiers. For years, the Friends and Mr. Sandy have been making these types of declarative statements about the Commons property. They quote the State Historic Preservation Office or the National Park Service, despite no official source for their specific claims supporting them shown in this and other videos. They encourage the view that there are hundreds of soldiers buried on the property and that they know exactly who is buried there, leading the public and descendants of those soldiers to donate money for the cause. Could Bill Sandy and the 2009 report be part of their plan to strangle and bleed out the property owner? This plan was stated publicly by Lance Ashworth, president of the Friends of Fishkill Supply Depot and federal investigator, as recorded here. I think you're going to get it, don't you? It seems like it's going to happen. I think we're on a crash course. It's just a matter of getting this guy to face the facts. We're on intersecting paths. We're going to keep on telling people about it. The land value is going to be down. He's going to be like, shit, the only ones I can sell it to are these guys. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to strangle them, basically. Leave them out. Why did Bill Sandy join the group besides revenge? Perhaps Mr. Lance Ashworth has the answer. There would be jobs created in the archaeological field. Um, our plan calls for, uh, as I said before, sustained study of the site, like year-round, long-term. One can only wonder who would be hired to perform this long-term archaeology if the friends gain control of the property. Having the archaeologist who worked on the site as a trustee of the group be the reason that everyone believed the friends' false claims? Did Bill give the group the credibility they needed? Regarding the 2009 report he worked on, he had this to say. But once, so I couldn't get involved until after that report was done, you know, under, uh, you know, professional ethics and such. Uh, so 2009, I think I joined with the friends, and uh, I've now been on the board for a few years. That's a lie. Bill Sandy, in his own words, has stated that he was on the property with members of the friends in 2008. Bill and the group have been trespassing since 2008, and even buried human remains near the foundation on the property north of Rishi's Run. Could that be the reason why the Friends of the Fishkill Supply Depot continue to ask for more digging, so what they planted will be discovered, rendering the property useless? Could that be the reason the 2009 report recommends further investigation where the foundation is located? Could this all be part of their philosophy to strangle and bleed out the landowner? Stay tuned for more in these videos and further information.